comment, and subscribe for more content. Where's the notification bell? It's to the right of you. Oh. What's up guys, it's MD Shady from a Funko Popcast back at it again with another great video for you guys today. Today we will be looking at a which is better video between Emerald City Comic Con, Fun Con, and New York Comic Con 2021. But before that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new here. Hit that little notification bell to be notified when future content like this video gets released. But anyways guys, let's check it out. So like I said, it will be a which is better video between Emerald City Comic Con, Fun Con, and New York Comic Con. The pops have just been announced and we're pretty excited for some of the stuff, so we figured it's a perfect time to make this video. So like always, we have some different categories and the categories are animation, Disney, games, Marvel and DC, movies, retro toys, Star Wars, television, and etc. which is just stuff that didn't really fit into another category. So first up we will be looking at the animation category. So for Emerald City Comic Con there were some pretty interesting pops. Jackie Chun was one of my favorites. I do own that pop. Najiri Hatto from My Hero Academia was also a really cool looking pop. A very interesting character and a cool design for a pop. There was a lot of cool stuff. The Buff Chopper was pretty cool as well from One Piece. I mean Underdog, he's alright. There were some other cool pops. Uh, ECC was definitely decent. For FunCon, we have Danger Mouse. That was a pretty cool pop, but I personally do like the soda cans better. Fat Gum from My Hero Academia, excellent looking pop, as well as Gang Orca, which is also really, really cool. And then we have Demongo, which I also do own that pop. It's sitting right here beside me, and that pop's really cool. Cool Samurai Jack pop. And then for Virtual Con, we have the Weekend All Might where he has like the bag and the, what is it, an umbrella in his other hand. And then we have Suyu, the clear version, which is pretty damn cool. I love Suyu, so it's cool to see when new pops of her get made. And then we have Jiraiya. This is a cool looking pop as well. Overall, I do think the best category or the best con for this category is probably Emerald City Comic Con. I do like the Jackie Chun a lot. And I mean, there's a little bit of everything for a lot of different collectors. The next category we'll be talking about is Disney and there's a lot of really great stuff in this. So starting off with ECCC, Ogre from The Adventure of the Gummy Bears, which is such a cool pop. I still don't have this, but I hope I can get it soon because it's such a cool pop. I don't have any of the Gummy Bears pops, but that's definitely something on my want list. The Caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland, also a really cool looking pop. The Belle with the book, that's decent. I mean, she's wearing green, so it makes sense for Emerald City. And then the Glow in the Dark Treasure Skeleton, which was so cool. What a great pop. So much detail, this was definitely one of the fan favorites I'd say from Emerald City Comic Con. Fun Con had the Blacklight White Rabbit, which I'm still on the hunt for. I've had a couple of chances to pick it up, but I haven't quite bit the bullet yet on this pop. The Walrus from Alice in Wonderland is also a pretty cool pop. I think I like the Caterpillar a little better though, more of a memorable character. The Wardrobe from Beauty and the Beast, what a great pop. This pop looks so crazy. I mean, it's amazing how they did this, how it looks like a wardrobe and somehow it still manages to kind of be popified. It still looks like a Funko Pop. Kronk, which is awesome, and he's got the squirrel with him, or the chipmunk, whatever it was. Uh, Squeaker, I think his name is. Just such a great pop. I do own this pop. I knew I needed to get it when these were announced. The Rocketeer, also an excellent looking pop. I mean, I believe before this, we hadn't seen a Rocketeer pop for many of years. Then we have the Mickey Mouse as the Three Musketeers. That's a cool looking pop. And then going with NYCC, we have Stitch, where he kind of has the curlers in his hair, I believe is what that is. And he's got the drawing in his hand and he's looking kind of a little bit sad. That's a decent looking pop. Goofy from the Three Musketeers. We knew we were going to see this. I mean, we've seen the Donald. We've seen the Mickey. This had to be the last one. And it turned out pretty good. I really like that pop. The Dutch Child from It's a Small World. That's all right. I mean, it's cool to see that they're pumping out more of the It's a Small World pops. And last but not least, we have the Sword in the Stone, Arthur, where he's pulling the sword. And that is really cool. I really like the design of this pop. So overall, Disney is a great category. I mean, there's so many pops that I want or own, but I think because of the majority of the pops that I really want are from FunCon, FunCon has to get the point for Disney. The next category is games, and honestly there's not a whole lot of pops to talk about. For Emerald City we had the Charmander and the Vaporeon that are the Diamond Collection. It's cool to see Pokemon pops, but Diamond Collection is not my favorite thing, and when it's 
Pokemon, which obviously is one of my favorite pops. I have a ton of them down here. I just don't really like them, but that Vaporeon does have a lot of secondary market value, which is pretty crazy. For Funcon, we have the Crash Bandicoot in mask armor. Such a crazy pop, so heavy. It's a real heavy pop for just being a, like a four inch pop. Xanathar from Dungeons and Dragons, I have that pop sitting right beside me down here. Really cool as well. I love all the different eyes and just the design of this pop. They did it really well. It really does look like that character from Dungeons and Dragons popified. And then we have the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle that are also Diamond Collection. I just wish we could see something else besides Diamond Collection when it comes to con pops for Pokemon, New York Comic Con, and we have Tiamat, I believe his name is pronounced, and he's that big five-headed dragon from Dungeons and Dragons, and this pop is so cool. I mean, so much detail, and so, it's so different than anything else that we've really seen pop-wise, especially for Dungeons and & Dragons. And we have the Diamond Collection Eevee, which I'm not surprised we're seeing. I mean, it's cool that they threw in a Pokemon Pop, but it's weird that they didn't throw in two, because we've been seeing the trend of two Diamond Collection Pokemon Pops for the cons. Oh... Who wins this one? Funcon does have four pops. I do own two of them and two are also Pokemon pops. But that Dungeon Dragons one for NYCC is also really cool. But I don't know if I'm going to be buying it. So I think Funcon gets the point. The next category we'll be looking at is Marvel and DC. And there's definitely a lot of pops to talk about in this category. I won't be talking about all of them, but I'll pick out some that I think do need mentioning. First, I'm gonna talk about the Spider-Man 2099. So cool. I love this costume for Spider-Man. I own the comic, the more original comic with like the hollow, if you guys know what I'm talking about. I love this character design and I think this pop turned out really, really cool. We have some Marvel zombie pops, which not too fond of, don't really love them. And also Deadpool pops. I think that they're starting to get overdone a bit. So I'm not a huge fan of those. But then we have Billy and Tommy from WandaVision in their like Halloween costumes. And this was a sweet two pack. If I collected the WandaVision pops, this would definitely be something that I'd want to have. Then for FunCon, we have the Batman with the scythe. I thought this was a pretty decent looking Batman pop. White Lantern, Sinestro. This was a cool looking pop. I don't really know a whole lot about this character, but I just thought that the pop in general looked cool. Galactus where it's like the kind of galaxy that he's painted. It's almost like a, what would you call it? Like, it's it's kind of like an artist series pop, but I don't think it actually was, but it's so cool. And then he's got the Silver Surfer in his hand, obviously. Such a great pop. Blade, which I do own one of those. I kind of picked it up on a whim, kind of thinking, hmm, maybe I should grab this pop. So I did, and honestly, it's pretty cool. Cap Wolf, which is an awesome pop. So much detail going on with Cap Wolf. It's cool to see a character like this rather than just seeing a bunch of different Captain Americas that we've been seeing. Not to mention about Captain America, we have the Diecast one, which this gets a little bit of a of a break because it's die cast which is something new and it's more of a collector's piece i guess and i really hope that they do some die cast stuff of stuff that i collect because i would really like to get some die cast pops into my collection and then we have new york comic con which only has the two pops it has carnage from the new venom movie which looks pretty sweet i mean carnage pops are always great carnage is such a great looking character and then we have polaris which is also a really cool looking pop but why was this not for emerald city comic-con because it's all green i think emerald city comic-con has to get to the point for this one just because i really do like the spider-man 2099 and i do like the Billy and Tommy two pack. I think those were great pops. And then with Funcon, there's a lot of cool pops, but it's a lot of just stuff I definitely wouldn't collect. And then with Virtual Con, I mean, the carnage is awesome, but I mean, one pop rather than like three pops technically in Emerald City Comic Con. So yeah, they definitely get the point. Now we're moving on to movies and there's really not a lot of pops to talk about here. For Emerald City Comic Con, we have Kim Pine. Scott Pilgrim is a kind of favorite movie of mine and DK's. We definitely love Scott Pilgrim and it's awesome to see new Scott Pilgrim pops and Kim Pine's an awesome character as well. So this is cool. She's got the drumsticks in her hand, which is cool. Fun Con, we have the Harry Potter where he's on the broom and he's got the I believe he's got a golden snitch in his hand it's hard to tell but I think that's what's going on here this is a cool pop but I don't really collect Harry Potter pops TDK from Suicide Squad this is interesting obviously he has his whole arm ripped off and he's kind of using it as a weapon I guess you could say it's something that we haven't really seen you don't really see a lot of characters where they have like disassembled limbs so it was something kind of new for Funko to get their hands into New York Comic Con we have the Savant from the Suicide Squad this is an interesting looking pop I I haven't seen the Suicide Squad yet, so I don't know about this character really, but 
it is a decent looking character and I mean if it's a con pop I'm sure people wanted it and I'm, I'm sure it'll probably sell decently. So for the movie categories I think I gotta give it to Emerald City Comic Con because Kim Pine is awesome and I mean FunCon and New York Comic Con just really didn't have a lot of stuff that I'm really interested in. The next category we have is retro toys and I love the retro toys. So starting off with Emerald City, we have Plumpy from Candyland. This is cool. I do plan on eventually collecting the Candyland pops, but I haven't really gotten around to it quite yet. Mantena and this is a cool looking pop. I mean, he's got the bow caster and I really like how the Masters of the Universe pops are turning out because they really do look like the toys just turned into pop. It's cool. I mean, there's quite a bit of detail going on with it and I really like how the eyes are big and white and then they kind of have the blue around them. I think that makes them really stand out nicely. Grimlock for Transformers. I mean, the Transformers pops are definitely pretty cool. It's something that's so interesting to see a Transformer turned into being a Funko Pop. It's just so great. And I do plan on eventually getting a couple of the Transformers pops and Grimlock will probably be one of them. FunCon, we have some a G.I. Joe pop and that is Cobra B.A.T. This is a cool looking pop. I love how the kind of chest plate is clear so you can see the innards. Such a great idea. Roboto, and this is pretty cool looking. I mean, not one of my favorites, especially for Masters of the Universe, but it is a cool pop nonetheless. And we have Whiplash, which is really cool. I really like Whiplash. And then Shockwave for Transformers, and this is an all right pop. I mean, normally I have the thing where I love anything purple, and this is a lot of purple, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. And then for New York Comic Con, we have the Snake Face from Masters of the Universe. This pop has a lot of detail, and I really like the kind of staff that he has in his hand, how it's the snake all wrapped up. I think that's great. There's just so much going on, especially with the snake eyes coming out of his, obviously, like eye sockets. So cool. And then we have Zodak, also from Masters of the Universe, and this is a pretty cool looking pop as well. This really screams, this is a Masters of the Universe pop to me, and that is great. Who had the best retro toys out of these three cons? And I think I'm going to give it to New York Comic Con just because I really like Snake Face. I think that pop is kind of the best pop out of all of these pops. And then Zodak is pretty cool too. And like I mentioned, it really does scream to me that it is a Masters of the Universe pop. And I think arguably like that's kind of what should happen when you look at a pop. The next category we have is Star Wars and there's not a lot of pops to talk about. For Emerald City Comic Con we have that green Yoda and this is cool. The box is so cool. I love how it's a completely green box. It really fits the theme for Emerald City Comic Con. For Fun Con we have the Jakku version of Rey. That's a pretty cool pop. And then we have the Imperial Super Commando. This is a decent pop. This is for Rebels, obviously. And I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of this pop, but it is definitely a cool pop. And then for the Virtual Con NYCC, we have the Unmasked Boba Fett. This is awesome. This is a really awesome pop. And it's my favorite pop out of all these Star Wars pops. So that's why NYCC gets this point. Moving on to the second to last category, and that is television. ECCC, we have Kenny Powers, really cool looking pop. I mean, it's awesome how they have like his sunburn where he has like the glasses line. I think that's a great detail and obviously it's cool and they could kind of use a body of a MLB pop to make this pop, which is something that's really smart on Funko's behalf. The Deep from The Boys. I'm kind of surprised this was a con pop and I'm not really sure how well it sold. Dwight Schrute as Kerrigan. This was a funny pop. I was surprised that we were seeing a Dwight with this costume on before seeing, I don't know, some other characters that we haven't seen from The Office. But it was so funny and it made me remember this episode of The Office. Deanna revealed from V. This is really cool. I know of it and I kind of know what happens in it. So this is a really cool pop to see and I love how you kind of have the lizard face coming through the eye there. It looks cool. For FunCon, we had the Parks and Recreation Filibuster Leslie. And this is a cool looking pop. I mean, it looks just like the actress who plays her. So that's a good thing. It's kind of like the thing where Bill Murray pops kind of always look like Bill Murray. Black Noir. And I don't like this pop at all. I mean, it's so black that you can't really see all the details, at least from the photo, maybe in person. You can make up the details a little more. Stanley Hudson in the samurai kind of outfit. And this is awesome. It's really cool to see some of these characters from The Office getting different versions rather than just the normal versions that we've seen because we've seen most of the characters now. We have the belly dancer Homer. 
And I do own this pop. This is like the first pop that I knew I needed to get from FunCon. Really enjoy this pop. And then for Virtual Con NYCC, we only have one standalone pop for television, but it's Moe's from The Office, and that is really, really cool. I'm surprised we're seeing a Moe's pop at least this early. I know there's so many Office pops now, but he's not really a main character to the show at all, but it's also so awesome that we got to see him. So if I had to give someone a point, who would I give the point to? I think. FunCon is going to get the point just by a hair. I do really like the Stanley Hudson and the Homer Simpson. I think that those are like my favorite pops out of here besides that Moe's from NYCC, but I don't like the Black Noir, which brought them down just a little bit. And now we're moving on to the last category, which is miscellaneous, and there's a lot of different stuff going on here, so I'll talk about most of it. For Emerald City Comic Con, we had the Weedle on the needle this is an interesting pop that a lot of people were kind of talking about obviously it's from the book and a lot of people didn't know what it was which is cool and it brought up conversation about this character which is a cool thing to do for a pop bony tony for garbage pail kids and i own this pop and i think the detail on this thing is just insane it's so cool and it is kind of one of those pops kind of like similar to the gelatinous cube where it's kind of breaking the skew of what normal Funko Pops are. The Squatch from the Sonics. This is really cool and it gives me hope that we'll see a Sasquatch for Jack Slink's Beef Jerky for the Ad Icons lineup. I surprised we haven't seen one by now especially when clearly they can do a pretty great Sasquatch pop. Then for FunCon we have Anthony and Joseph Russo. This is a pretty cool looking two-pack. I like when they do two packs of let's say brothers or like a two pack of directors of two different directors that directed something makes a lot of sense and this is great nonetheless then we have some tokidoki pops and these are pretty cool tokidoki is an interesting kind of what would you call it like two companies coming together to make toys which is decent the jackbox and tracksuit love this pop paid a lot of money for it on the secondary market i think it was limited to 2000 pieces and I knew I needed to have it. Smaxy the Seal, I also own this pop. Really like this pop, it's cool for the Sugar Smacks and Kellogg's and I really like those really kind of retro ad icons. I think it's a good idea that they're doing because it's just so cool and retro obviously. The Movies mascot from Jay and Silent Bob. This is awesome too, I'm surprised we've seen something like this but I'm glad we did and I still need to buy this pop. Then we have the drummer McNugget, and I love this pop as well. I love all of the McDonald's pops. They are just so nostalgic and so awesome, and I'm not surprised that drummer McNugget was chosen to be a con exclusive pop. And then for New York Comic Con, we have Lafayette, which is a cool pop for Hamilton. I love Hamilton. I thought it was so great. The jack-o'-lantern McNugget. This is awesome. He looks so cool. I mean, his eyes look really big on this pop, which is a good thing. And I love his little chubby cheeks. I think he is just really adorable and it's also a little bit spooky because it's a jack-o'-lantern. Then we have the Polly Pigeon and the Pizza Rat and these were pretty cool pops. I mean, we've already seen these pops, but I like these ones better than any of the other ones we've seen, I think. Like, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's just because they're new and fresh, but I do think that these ones look good compared to the other ones we've seen last year. So now to pick a winner for miscellaneous, I mean, there's a lot going on here. We have NBA, we have Garbage Pail Kids, we have directors, we have ad icons, but ad icons is kind of heavily outweighing this for me, so FunCon is definitely getting the point. There's so many different ad icons, the four ad icons where I knew I had to have all four of those. So FunCon takes it, and I'm honestly not surprised because FunCon was awesome and there were so many pops from it that I knew I needed to have for my collection. So it just makes sense. I'm not surprised they won. So that's all the time I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, don't forget to smash the like button. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know, did you also agree with me that FunCon was the best con this year? Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and hit that little notification bell to be notified when future content like this video gets released. But anyways, guys, I'm out of here. Peace in. Peace out. Follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at a Funko Popcast. If you want to check out some of our other content that's featured on our channel, you can click either the playlist that's on your screen right now featuring previous episodes of our weekly podcast, a Funko Popcast, or we have suggested a video for you guys in relation to today's video.